Hey everybody, uh, this video is going to show you, I guess, not really show you, more just give you some strategies of how to use reasoning to solve problems. Um, how we solve any problem, and this is in the club math classroom, this is outside the math classroom, how we solve problems looks completely different depending on what the problem is. How I go to solve a math problem versus how I solve problems at the grocery store or during a sports game or anything like that is completely dependent on what is going on. If you're looking at this video thinking it's going to be a step-by-step -step guide on something that's going to work every single time, I hate to tell you, uh, it's not it's not going to happen. It's not going to be that type of video. This is more about general problem solving. What I want you to remind yourself of a lot of the time is math is not easy. Solving problems in general uh, inside like a math sense or not is, is not easy. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of practice. And with practice, you get better at it. I think a lot of the time when you see somebody that's good at something, I think what we tend to forget is that that person has worked a lot on that skill and you're seeing the end product you're not seeing all the times they struggled you're not seeing all the times they got it wrong times they had to go back and fix it um the times they ripped up their paper threw it on the ground cried you're not seeing any of this you're not seeing the work you're just seeing the product please remember that when i am solving any of these questions on the screen for you this took me time i don't know where i'm really going with it i'm kind of rambling but um, I really do love math, but the reason I really like math is that I like problem solving. I don't expect to get it. I've kind of gotten to this point where um, anytime I look at a problem, I don't expect to get it right the first time. I don't expect that the first strategy that I pick is the best strategy, the quickest strategy, a strategy that's going to work at all. I have zero clue when I first look at a problem that I have never seen before. I, a lot of the time I'm just sh shooting in the dark. I hope it works. If it doesn't, then I have to find another strategy. So I'm going to show you three problems today. Let's get started. In a particular puzzle, the digits one through nine are placed in nine circles arranged in a triangle. Each digit can be used only once. When the puzzle is completed, the digits on each side of the triangle must add to 17. A partially completed puzzle is shown below. Determine the missing numbers. Strategy number one. Read the question fully. Once you're done, read it again. What I tend to do is I highlight information that I deem to be important. So I'm gonna go ahead and underline what I think would be important. We're using the digits one to nine. We need to know that. Uh, they're arranged in a triangle. I can see that below. Each digit can only be used once. Key idea right there. When the puzzle is complete, the digits on each side must add to 17. A partially completed puzzle is shown below. From here with solving this problem, what I'm gonna do is list all the digits one to nine. And I'm gonna cross out the ones that have actually already been used up. So I can't use six again, can't use two, I can't use nine, and I can't use five. From here, each of these three lines have to have a sum of 17. I'm going to come up with three different equations. Equation one, a plus b plus nine plus c has to be equal to 17. All right, I'm going to subtract nine from both sides. And what I know is that a plus b plus c has to be equal to eight. Okay, equation one. Equation number two is gonna come from this left side. I have a plus six plus e plus two has to also equal 17. I'm gonna take away the six and the two from the left side and I'm gonna bring it to the right side. So a plus e equals 17 minus eight gives me nine. Equation three is gonna come from the bottom. Two plus five plus d plus c has to be equal to 17. D plus C, so again, two plus five is seven. So 17 minus seven gives us 10. What I have here is three different equations. And using the numbers that I have left, I have to find a way 
to use all of the numbers that are remaining so that they fit in this triangle appropriately. I'm going to start with my second equation, a plus e equals 9. Out of all the numbers that are left, the only ones that add to 9 is 8 and 1. So I'm going to put here that it has to be 8 and 1. What I don't know right now is if I don't know if a is equal to 8 or if a is equal to 1. Because 8 plus 1 or 1 plus 8, the order doesn't matter. So I'm just going to put that here. I know that it has to be 8 and 1, but I don't really particularly know the order. I'm also going to circle these off, saying that I've used these before, so I can't use them again. D plus C equals 10. The only two numbers that add to 10 out of the numbers that are left are 7 and 3. Once again, I don't know the order of these, so I'm just going to put 7 and 3. I don't know which is which. I'm going to also box these off because I've now used these before. Here, A plus B plus C has to be equal to 8. Well, the only number I haven't used is 4, so I know for sure that 4 has to be used. When I look at what line this came from, it came from here, a plus b plus 9 plus c. Well, b is the only number that isn't also being used in this line or the bottom one. So what that tells me is that b has to be a number that isn't included in the other two equations. Well, that's number that's only left is 4. So that tells me that b has to be equal to 4. Perfect. What I notice about a a is attached to this line, but it's also attached to that line. So A, like we have it in both of our equations here, A and A, it needs to be used in two different equations. Here's where I can start to identify, is A going to be equal to 8 or is A going to be equal to 1? Let's just say we made it 8. Well, 8 plus 4 is 12. Already, it's bigger than 8. There's no way that A can be equal to 8. So therefore, a has to be equal to 1. We're going to use the same reasoning for d and c. When I look at the bottom, c is being used at, in two different equations. We have it in this line. We also have it in that line. So now I need to look at, OK, well, would 7 or 3 fit with my top equation? Well, I already have 4. I just found that I need to use 1. Well, 4 plus 1 plus 7 does not equal 8 but 4 plus 1 plus 3 does. So 3 has to be equal to C. And now we're just going to fill that in. So if C is equal to 3, well, what plus 3 equals 10? Well, that's going to be 7. Here, if A is equal to 1, then E has to be equal to 8. And then we have the rest of them filled out to 1, b is equal to 4, c is equal to 3, d is equal to 7, and e is equal to 8. Example 2. Take out a calendar. Place a box around any nine numbers such that the numbers make a 3 by 3 box. Deductively show that the sum of the nine numbers is equal to the middle number multiplied by 9. Okay, first what I need to do is pull out a calendar. What I'm going to do with this calendar is I need to take any 3x3 three three box. So any of these would work. I'm going to take a snip of these nine numbers right here. All right, here's my snipped calendar. What we're trying to show is that if I find the sum of these nine numbers, that it's going to be equal to the middle number multiplied by 9. Let's just first just check that this actually works. So let's add all of these numbers together. So what we do is we, when we find the sum, we get a sum of 117. What I notice is if I take the middle number, which is 13, and I multiply it by 9, I also get 117. We need to solve this problem deductively. So what we need to show is that this is going to work every single time. This often requires a variable. So in terms of problem solving here, uh, this is a very specific example. We need to make this more of a general case. So what I'm going to start with is instead of having the 5, 6, 7, 12, 13, yada, yada, I'm going to remove them. Like so. From here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my top left box and I'm going to input a variable there. Let's call it x. What we know is that the next day will be one greater than the, the day that came before. So if this was the fifth, then this would have to be the sixth. 
So all I'm doing there is I'm taking whatever day it was and I'm adding one to that. To move to the next day, I would start with the day I started kind of back on here, so just X, but I would add two. What would go in my next row? Well, when I look at the calendar, here we started at five, six, and then seven, and then the rest of the week goes by and we come back and we get to 12. What we notice is that if I'm starting with my original number of five, I would go five and I'd add seven to that to get 12, which makes sense. If a whole week goes by, that should be happening seven days later. So from the beginning where we have X, we just need to add seven to it. And then the next day would be eight. The next day would be nine. If I'm going two weeks ahead, then that's 14 days. So this would be X plus 14, X plus 15, X plus 16. What we need to show is that when I take the sum of all of those nine days, that it's gonna be equal to the middle number multiplied by nine. Let's start to come up with an equation that represents this. So let's take the sum of all nine of these. This is gonna be a long thing to write out, but we need to do it. So let's start. So here's me beginning. So I have X plus X plus one plus X plus two. Then we're gonna add x plus seven, and so on and so on. Okay, there's all of my nine days added up. What I need to set this equal to, I'm trying to show that this sum is gonna be equal to the middle number, x plus eight times nine. So nine times x plus eight. The left side of this equation, we can make this look way nicer. Let's add all of our variables together and all of the numbers. So when I add the variables, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 x's. So I have 9 x. And then when I add up all of the constants, I get 72. On the right side, I have 9 times x plus 8. So let's expand and multiply the 9 into the brackets. 9 times x is 9 x. 9 times 8 is 72. The left side will always be equal to the right side, thus showing that the sum of the nine numbers will always be equal to the middle number multiplied by 9. So I hope this helped you solve problems. Um, in general, I don't really have a nice step-by-step -step guide that I can give you on something that's going to work every single time, but I hope by watching me solve problems that you've learned a few more strategies and that you can use them moving forward. Have a good day.